Train stations. It's undeniable that these are useful places. It's where you get on a train and go to wherever it is you want to go. Some of the most useful train stations in the whole world are served by trains going in all different directions every few minutes. There are also stations that are just less busy, and then there are stations that are just plain useless. In today's video, we are traveling to two commuter rail stations in the US state of Maryland, which are both extremely useless. Both stations are located on the Mark Camden line, and we're gonna see which of the two is Maryland's least useful station. The Mark Camden line has a total length of 39 miles or 63 kilometers, connecting Washington Union Station with Baltimore Camden Station. It's one of three lines operated by Mark, Maryland's commuter rail agency. But what I find interesting is that Mark has another line between DC and Baltimore, the Penn line. I can't think of too many other examples in the US where a city pair is connected by two different commuter corridors. The Penn line goes to Penn Station, the Camden line goes to Camden Station. Oh. But that's not the only difference. The Penn line is an electrified line which runs in both directions, all day, every day. It doesn't have a great schedule per se, but it's reliable enough for the most part. The Camden line schedule? Eh, it's not as great. It's a true commuter rail. Trains only run on weekdays, and only during rush hour, so you can really only use it at those times. Fortunately, because there are big cities on both ends, trains run in both directions when they do run. But the schedule for the intermediate stations, that's where the mind-boggling stuff really happens, but I'm getting ahead of myself here. The Camden line wasn't always just a secondary commuter line. It's hard to believe now, but this is one of the most historically significant railway lines in the United States. It was built by the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad. The Baltimore and Ohio built their first line from Baltimore, headed west in 1830, which uses part of what still today is the Camden Line. And only a few years later, in 1835, they opened the line south to Washington, D.C. The Mark Camden Line is that full line from Baltimore to D.C. The b &O network eventually stretched from Philadelphia to Chicago, and this line was host to some of the most famous, luxurious passenger trains in the country, like the Capital Limited or the Royal Blue. Those days are unfortunately long gone. Hey everybody, welcome to a brand new Trains Are Awesome video. I'm Tom, and this station, of course, is Washington Union Station. This is where we will be starting our journey today. Today we're going to take Mark commuter trains into Maryland to find Maryland's most useless station or Maryland's least useful station, however you want to say it. So first we have to ask ourselves, what makes a station useful? To me, a station's utility has two parts to it. It basically boils down to access and travel options. First, access. The location of a station is super important. A station should be in a place where people live, work, shop, or have fun. Furthermore, there must be easy connections for people who need to travel further. Transit connections, bike storage, etc. In that sense, Baltimore Camden, the northern terminus of the Camden Line, is a good example of this. It is right next to Camden Yards, the famous baseball stadium. Camden Yards is a hub of business and it's also just close to residential neighborhoods and Baltimore's business district. And to access all of this, Mark passengers have an easy, cross-platform connection to the Baltimore Light Rail. But when it comes to utility, the other side of the coin is travel options. And here, Camden doesn't score as well. When you show up to a station, you expect a train to take you somewhere. That's what stations are for. And the more places a train can take you, the better. Well, for big chunks of the day at Camden, you could show up, but there will be no trains to take you anywhere. You also want to be able to travel back to where you started in most cases, especially if you've left your bicycle or parked your car at that station. Knowing you can get back is a big factor in deciding whether or not to take the train. And most of us take that for granted, but you'll see that's not something you can take for granted on the Mark Camden line. This station is honestly one of the most impressive architectural marvels in America. Love. The first thing we're going to do is take the Mark Camden line 
to Jessup Station. And today I am joined by my good friend, Bryce. Hey, we've got a crazy adventure today that's gonna be amazing, so stay tuned. Now we're riding on the Camden Line. And in today's video, we're going to visit two intermediate stations, both who compete for the title of most useless station, based on the qualifications that I just brought up. Both of these are pretty terrible and make you wonder what is even the point? From what I can tell, I don't really think people use the Camden Line to travel between Washington and Baltimore. Instead, it's to serve some of the intermediate suburbs, particularly Laurel, which has the highest ridership of any intermediate station. So we just stopped at Savage, which I think is a really funny name for a station. The next stop is Jessup. That's where we're getting off. Travel time from Washington Union Station to Jessup was about 37 minutes. And now it's important that when you see a conductor, you tell him that you want to get off at Jessup because it is what's considered a flag stop. So if nobody is getting on or off, the train will not stop there. So we just got off the train at Jessup Station. These tracks right here, like I said, this is one of the most important railway lines in United States railroad history. And this is what the station looks like. The conductor told us, yep, another rundown station. Apparently it almost never happens that passengers ask to get off here. That's why it's a flag stop. You actually have to tell the conductor that you want to get off at Jessup. And if we were hoping to catch a train out of here today, well, bad news for us, there will be no more trains stopping here today. There's plenty of Camden Line trains still scheduled for today, but none of them will stop at Jessup. We can just wave as they pass by. Yeah, but I don't really wanna wait for that. If we pull up the Mark Camden Line schedule, we see that from Washington to Baltimore, there are 11 trains a day, but only one of them stops at Jessup, the 854 that stops there at 5.59 p.m. Looking towards Washington, there's also only one train that stops there at 6.53 a.m. So these are your only two options to get to Jessup. And that probably explains why ridership is really, really low. Although Bryce has another theory for why that is. There's nothing here! <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Here's the main entrance to the station right here. Isn't it grand? ADA accessible, which is nice. Yeah, but this isn't. Oh, well, no. Well, they probably have like elevators or ramps. And this is our only way out of here. Yeah, tell us how we're getting back home. Well, we're gonna follow a couple of crazy rural roads, suburban roads, and that's the way we're gonna get to Dorsey, which is a place where one train will stop. On these scooters provided by Bryce. Because we're not camping out here on the platform. No. All right, we've made it to Dorsey. How long do you think that took? Oh man, it took about 18 minutes. Yeah, we did that pretty fast. The first part was terrifying. We had to be on this like two lane highway. I had the semi truck breathing down my neck, but it was all fine after that. And now we've made it to Dorsey, which means that we can actually take a train home to Washington DC. So Dorsey has a lot of things that you should reasonably be able to expect from a train station. The platforms have things like shelters and benches on them. There's an indoor waiting area with information posted and every train on the Camden line stops at Dorsey. And I think part of that is because here you can transfer to a bus route 201, which takes you from Gaithersburg to BWI airport. So it's kind of an important regional hub. So this is Dorsey station. Still not great, but definitely better than Jessup. a lot of fun. We made it, but just barely. <laughs> what were your thoughts on Jessup? I think that Jessup is just the product of American transit systems, but honestly, maybe it will be better in the future. Maybe they'll make it into something exciting. Maybe a destination that people would like to be. 
for now it's a destination for transit enthusiasts like us. Yeah. I'm honestly surprised that they even keep it open. So believe it or not, there is a station on this very Mark Camden line that I think is even more useless than Jessup. Jessup gets served by one train per direction per day. But this next station we're going to show you is served even less than that. Sort of. It's really weird. And to visit this station, we had to come back a different day for filming because it's impossible to combine visiting both Jessup and this next station on the same day if you're traveling from Washington, D.C. This giant horse statue indicates that we're at a racetrack. This is the Laurel Racetrack in Laurel, Maryland. And this is Laurel Racetrack Station. Let's check it out. All right, so this is Laurel Racetrack. Right across the street is the actual racetrack. But uh, let's go check out the station. I wonder if this sign says pedestrians only so you don't drive through it or you don't take your horse through. Ceiling's kind of low for either. Look at that. All right, so once you reach the top of the stairs, it's bye-bye concrete. Hello, wooden platform. Laurel Racetrack was opened by the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad in 1911, which feels really old until you realize that the Baltimore and Ohio was already running trains on this line for 80 years at that point. The station has a very abandoned, almost creepy feel to it, especially when it's dark out like it is right now. And part of that is just because nobody uses the station. The 2018 ridership statistics show that there were two boardings per day. And honestly, that feels kind of high to me once you discover what Laurel Racetrack's secret is. You know, with the platform being so little, part of me is like anxious that the train is not gonna stop and pick us up, which it should, but still, I'll be glad when it's here. So what's special about this station? Well, we're getting on one of only a few trains that actually stops here. Now stations with infrequent service, unfortunately that's the reality for more places, but I don't know of a single other station that has this. Let's go look at the timetable over there. So here's the Camden line schedule. Let's look at two Washington and there at Laurel Racetrack, you see the afternoon service. Now let's look at from Washington, Laurel Racetrack. Would you look at that? Not a single train from Washington to Baltimore stops at Laurel Racetrack, not one. There are three southbound trains that stop here but no northbound trains. And honestly, I can't even fathom why that would be the case in the schedule. How does that make sense? And how could anybody use a station that you can't travel back to? Say you're going to Washington DC and then you wanna go back to Laurel Racetrack. That's just impossible. Which yes, means that that platform behind me is never ever used. Our train is coming now and I think we're gonna surprise the conductor when he sees that people actually wanna get on. So thankfully the train stopped. I asked the conductor on the way in, I was like, how many people do you pick up here? He's like, barely anyone ever. We're already at the main Laurel station. It's a really short distance between the two. And these are the Mark II coaches. We really like them. They have probably the best seats of any Mark train. So which station is the least useful? Well, both Jessup and Laurel Racetrack are really underserved and both have not a lot going on around it. But theoretically, if your schedule just so aligned with the Mark Camden line, you could travel from Jessup into DC and then back to Jessup in a day. But it would be impossible to travel from Laurel Racetrack to anywhere and then back to Laurel Racetrack because the station is only served in one direction. There are a few examples worldwide of trains that only stop in one direction at a station because that's the way the tracks are laid out, but I've never heard of a station that has two platforms and two tracks but all the trains in one direction just skip it. I, I really can't wrap my mind around it, but when I saw it on the schedule, I knew I had to visit it. And now you know that Laurel Racetrack is Maryland's most useless station. If you enjoyed today's video, please subscribe to Trains Are Awesome. Thank you so much for watching today. We'll see you next time.